Oh yeah, after using a lot of lenses and just come back to this classic Sigma Prime. Always, it's so satisfying. Even if I ignore this has f1.4, this crispness, sharpness, and high resolution feels are incredible. But... Now we all know this Sony 24-7mm 2.8 G Master Mark II is also a fantastic lens. Well, I think I can say this is the best standard zoom lens of all Sony e mount lenses. Maybe this is too great as the zoom lens. So in the last video of this part, so maybe this 50mm, you know, this 50mm is better than mid-range 50mm prime lens. I don't know, it's just my curiosity, but this 50mm versus like Sigma 50mm, which is better, that could be a good video, that could be a good topic. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comment below. So I simply thought if this 2470 GM2 can beat the mid-range prime, especially Sigma R series prime lenses, you know, which are so popular and famous for the alternative of GM, prime lenses maybe buying this best zoom lens in the market you know instead of buying a couple of, of sigma prime lenses will cost you less money time and energy in the long term camera life so today just out of my curiosity i'm gonna do the zoom lens versus prime lens but specifically i want to see if this 24 mm g marshall 2 can beat the sigma 50 mil art and image crudity or not and one more question is coming. Even if the G Master Zoom wins in the image crudity, the prime lens has faster aperture like 1.4, 1.8. So how can you choose the best way for you? So let's start the video finally. Oh, by the way, today, I'm just a guy who reviews stuff. The main storyteller is him. So yeah, just follow him. So before you get into this video, please hit the subscribe and like. I'm trying to hit the 100,000 subscribers in 2023. To achieve that, definitely, I need your massive support and love. So this kind of portrait shot is a great way to see the total ability, total performance of that lens. Now I'm on Sony 24-7mm 2.8G Master 2. So how is that depiction? Great, right? So I'm moving to left side and let's see 50mm art on the right side. So how is it? Of course, same condition for each. 50mm, f2.8, s lock 3, color graded equally. It's a little bit bright because the sun is directly hitting my face. I hope the white is not blown out. So let's get closer. So first, let's talk about the obvious difference the color. This depends on the preference, but Sigma has stronger warm color temperature, and Sony is more like neutral. It's difficult to say which is better, but Sony was closer to the actual color of this environment. So in the same footage, let's see the sharpness and contrast. Okay, so with no crop, I don't see any sharpness difference. Now it's cropped a lot. Sigma looks a little sharper, eyes look clearer, and overall Sigma has a little better crispness. Also, here is the interesting thing. Sigma has a little more bokeh than GM. Even though the distance was the same, of course, the camera setting to f2.8. So Sigma has some extra space for the aperture, like f2.8 out of 1.4. But G Master is f2.8 out of f2.8, no extra space, so maybe Possibly that is, you know, that is doing something. You know, I found the skateboard was sleeping cold in my house. Oh, that was a good childhood memory. I love skate. You know, the skate, SK8, skate. So I thought that this could be a good transportation for YouTube video you know, making. And this is. <gasps> Jesus. You know, this thing was too loose, maybe, and I almost Hop in the slipped. Car, watch it go vroom, vroom. I told him that I was soon. But the question is I want to see if I can still do some tricks after like 15 years, I don't know, maybe. 
This is good. I promise I'm gonna deliver the good quality lens review video today, but here, let me just do this. It's kind of scary though. Let's stop. Okay, cut. Enough for B-roll shots. So in this small nostalgic vibe town, let's dive deep in the sharpness and detail depiction. Even when you crop the image so hard, Sigma keeps the good sharpness level. Not only sharpness, I feel Sigma got a little better expression ability. It's really hard to describe by words, but isn't it good? In a really fine detail, I can see the prime lens power on Sigma 50mm art footage. So, don't get me wrong, this G Master is the zoom lens, but it's doing more than zoom lens. If it's not, the Sigma 50mm art lens, like a Sony normal 50mm, it would be a good battle. But this time, I think I can conclude even Sony 2470 GM2 couldn't win against Sigma 50mm art in image quality. So, here's my advice. If you try to have same you know, lens total ability as zoom lenses with prime lenses, like having three different focal length prime lenses, it will cost you more than having 2470 GM2 eventually, and it will kill your mobility. So I don't recommend that. Also, I don't recommend you to have both of them at the same time. You know, if you want just a prime lens bokeh, it doesn't have to be art lens. And if you want just a versatility, also, it doesn't have to be GM2 lens. So if you need the best lens performance with versatility, this 2470 GM2 is for you. Especially people who shoot in many kinds of situations, environments, but need the best image quality at the same time. You know, image quality is not better than Sigma 50mm, but definitely this is more than any other zoom lenses out there. And if you bet all in only image quality, this Sigma Prime lens is for you. Especially people who shoot in almost same scenario every time and don't need uh, many kinds of focal length. And after getting Prime lens and you need a versatility, you can have some budget secondhand zoom like a Sigma 2870, Tamron 2875, or even Sony 2400 5mm f4. Those are great pair with Prime lens. So yeah, that was fun. I was able to know what I wanted to know. So I'm so satisfied. And I think this video will help you, some of you guys as well. So I think my job is done now. I will see you guys somewhere, you know, in this type of casual vlogging scene. So yeah, see you guys. Hello. You seriously thought you could get away from this without listening to the crux? Come on, this is the good part. This is the dessert of this video. But I promise I will keep it short and simple today. So, the important thing is to have the priority. Like, how much of sharpness resolution do you need? How much of bucket do you want? Where and when do you shoot a lot? How light do you want to be? How heavy do you want to be? Getting all of them at the same time is almost impossible. Well, unless you have a lot of money, but when you decide the best possible priority for you, you will know how much you need and how much you should pay for that. So, let me say this at the last. First, get to know yourself and think about what you really need more than what you want without caring about a bunch of chaos around you. And decide your best priority. Then you can meet the best gear for you. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions, just shoot me anytime, anywhere, and hit the subscribe, like, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.